In this first part, I'm going to explain velocity, momentum, and impulse associated with skiing and snowboarding. So straight ahead, you'll see there's a jump. As we go over the jump, there's going to be the jump itself and a bump right after it. The bump is called the knuckle, and the knuckle is what forms the landing of the jump. The steeper the landing is, the bigger the jump is going to be. So, that's because when you go over a bigger jump, you're going to have a lot of velocity, which is going to mean a greater momentum, and you're going to need to reduce the impulse of your landing, which is why there's a steep landing. So we're just going to ride through this terrain park, it's called, which has rails, boxes, and jumps to challenge your riding. Straight ahead, there'll be another jump, quite a bit bigger than the one we just went over. And Austin is just going to ride over the knuckle of it. He's going pretty fast. He's going about 17 meters per second. Alright, this is called a rail. Rails are usually metal and challenge you because they're, it's a smaller piece of ground underneath your snowboard and make you have to balance more on your left and right or while you're on the rail forward and back. So we're just going to ride through the rest of the, this terrain park to see what else is offered. Trails on mountains are labeled as beginner, which is a green circle, intermediate, which is a blue square, advanced is a black diamond, and expert only, which is two black diamonds. This here is a black diamond, which is advanced, at Granite Peak in Wausau. Granite Peak is the fifth tallest mountain in the Midwest and has the second best terrain parks rated by Transworld Snowboarding. My little brother Austin is going to go down this black diamond at full speed. Double black diamonds are usually tree runs or are much steeper than this one. He's going to hit this bump right here. This bump is called a roller and usually there's many after it. These rollers are designed to slow people down before they come to the lift for people like Austin who like to go down the hill full speed. They're fun when you can get air over them, but they're kind of annoying when you can't get enough speed to make it to the lift. Velocity, momentum, and impulse mainly take place in the terrain park, which is what we're coming up to up here. Outside the terrain park, it's basically, you have velocity going down the hill, you need to slow down your momentum as you come to the lift and you have impulse if you crash. In the park you need momentum coming up to jumps and rails and boxes in order to make it to the end or to make it or to make a good landing and if you don't make a good landing such as Austin coming up here which he tried to do a 180 um, your momentum becomes impulse. <laughs> he crashed and the GoPro got covered in snow. Luckily there's snow to fall in so it don't hurt as much. When you turn on the TV and see snowboarding, it's likely you're gonna see half pipe. Half pipe is what you see right here and half pipes are constantly being modified. These Olympic half pipes, the smaller one from Nagano in 1998 and the bigger one from Sochi in 2014 are, or the Sochi one is about double the size of the Nagano one. The wall height of the Nagano is 11 and a half feet and the height of the Sochi is 22 feet. They make these walls taller and the half pipes wider because as snowboard snowboarders ride up the walls their momentum has to be verted into going straight up so the forces 
all their force going towards the wall is pushing them against the wall. So the wider and taller walls reduce the the force as much as it can. Half pipe has a lot to do with kinetic and potential energy. Potential energy is the energy an object has due to its position and kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. Snowboarders will have the most potential energy when they're highest in the air, like in this picture right here. And as they ride down the wall of the half pipe, their potential energy will turn into kinetic energy. As they ride up the other wall, their kinetic energy becomes turns back into potential energy. And the snowboarder will do this all the way to the end of the half pipe. In this part, I'm going to talk about the two different types of lifts, the fixed grip and the detachable. Right here is a picture of someone getting off a fixed grip lift. This is not Granite Peak like I've had footage of in earlier parts of the video. But as you'll see, in the top right, there's a big wheel that's known as the bull wheel. That is a giant pulley that is at the top of the lift and there's also one at the bottom there's a cable that runs all the way around this pulley with chairs that hang from it the chairs are balanced so when you sit on it they don't lean from left to right the bull wheels are powered by two engines a primary and a backup the primary is electric and the backup is diesel if the electric engine ever breaks down, the diesel is turned on. The cable that runs around the bull wheels has to stay off the ground, so towers are put up. These towers have wheels on them called sheaves, which is what the cable runs along. The cable either goes above, below, or in between when there's a set of sheaves on top and bottom of the cable. As you can see in this picture of a fixed grip lift, there's the bull wheel and the cable going around it making a giant pulley but the other type of lift is called the detachable lift the detachable lift is very similar but it's the loading and unloading that's different in this picture of a detachable chair lift the bull wheel is not visible that's because as the chair lift comes to the top of the mountain and to the bottom of the mountain it is, it's knocked off the fast cable that it's on and it's put on another cable or bar. That allows the chair to slow down while the people get on and off the lift. It continues to go slow as it turns 180 degrees around, latches onto the fast cable, and heads back down the hill. Detachable chair lifts are much preferred by mountains because of their their ability to go faster, hauling people up the mountain faster, and because they often carry a lot more people than the fixed grip lifts. Most everything else between the detachable and fixed grip are the same. And that will conclude the science behind the lifts. Yeah, we're gonna do the mobile. Yeah, let's
Okay, so now I'm going to talk about my snowboard. My snowboard is the Avalanche Source 150 centimeter. Um, it's a metal edge snowboard. Um, if you look closely, it's got a metal edge that runs all the way around it. That helps dig into the snow and make your turns nice and crisp. Um, the base, bases on snowboards are either sintered or extruded. Sintered is usually the more high quality one. Um, I got a little gouge in there. That's from a rail I built out of PVC pipe. I cut the end of it and my snowboard could use a little touch up. It's not looking the, it's seen better days. Um, snowboards have some funny bends. This is called camber, which means it ducks down and then it comes up in the middle and then it goes down again and then of course you got your tip so you're not digging into the snow. Um, camber snowboard tend to have a lot of, a lot more pop which means um, you can like lean on your back foot more and jump up and they tend to bounce higher or ollie higher um, another popular snowboard bend is called the rocker it's pretty much a big banana shape and the rocker tends to be um, much softer which means you can like lean on your back foot, get your front end up more, um, easier to butter. And then the last bend I'm going to talk about is a hybrid or rocker hybrid, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much um, camber in between your feet and rocker right here and to the tips. Um, so this is camber, like I said before, I really like this camber. And you see this pad on here? That's for getting on and off the ski lift. So if I were to go down the mountain, I ride regular, which means my left foot is forward and I'd be going down the mountain that way. Uh, when you get on and off the lift, this pad is to put your boot on and guide your board around. And um, that's about it. Now, I'm going to talk about bindings. Boots will be later. Um, my bindings actually go on my board right here and right here with these screws. You screw these screws into these holes right here. This is a four hole mounting system. Burton has their own special system, um, but four holes is the most common. It's just four screws into your board, and um, my bindings here are called the Burton Mission. They come with an extra base plate, so so it's compatible with four hole mount instead of their own funky system. Um, these bindings are decent. This is called the high back. Um, it's to keep your foot straight up and more stability for leaning back and things. When you're looking for snowboard equipment, bindings between board, bindings, and boots. Bindings are usually the least important and boots are usually the most important. So now boots. Boots are called the Avalanche Surge. Avalanche is discontinued. They don't make them anymore, but they still sell their product. Um, these boots, well, actually, they might make them still. I'm not sure, but they're not making like new 2016, 2015, new uh, technology every year. But, uh,. Boots are just to keep your ankles contained so you're not breaking ankles. Um, it's just to prevent, so yeah, just to help support. Um, they got this big tongue to keep out water and most snow. And then they got this another one inside to keep more padding and 
more stability and heat in there. And they got really long laces to lace up. These boots are really comfortable. I like them. Um, I think I'm going to need new ones next, next year because they're too small. The first of these three I'm going to talk about are moguls, which is what we're coming up to right here, as you can see that sign back there. Uh, if you listen, you can hear that it's really icy in between the moguls, so it might fall down a lot. But what moguls are, are just big lumps. As you'll see, as you look down the hill, you'll just see bumps on the hill. That's what moguls are. Moguls are naturally formed by skiers and snowboarders taking the same line and pushing snow into a spot or another. Another skier or snowboarder may came by, come by and not want to hit that snow they pushed away in case of catching an edge or falling over. So they'll take the same line they did, which will push more snow. Usually moguls start at the bottom of the mountain by these little piles of pushed snow and people constantly avoiding them and the, they work their way up the mountain. These piles can become really big the more people ride on them. These here are pretty normal sized moguls. As we go down the hill you'll see they get smaller but some can be up to 8 feet tall and the size of a car. So I'm just gonna ride down this hill here can pay attention to how it's icy between the moguls because of everybody pushing snow on top making them bigger and how I have to maneuver around them and over them. I'm not the most experienced mogul rider. We're coming to the bottom of this run, and you can see that the moguls are much smaller and easier to maneuver around. But if you look to your right, you'll see a patch of trees that I'm going to ride through. Uh, trees are the next thing I'm going to talk about. Trees and powder kind of go hand in hand because the groomer can't get through all the trees and groom the runs like it would most runs. The groomer also doesn't groom moguls even though it could to allow them to allow riders to be able to have the challenge of riding through moguls so I'm gonna ride through these trees here and you'll see that the snow is much more powdery than the snow we were just on the groomer is what packs down the snow and makes it easier to ride on I'm gonna ride over this log right here I saw it on the lift and I wanted to hit it. And powder is much harder to ride in because you've got to lean on your back foot more to keep the nose of your board from being buried in the snow. So moguls, powder, and trees are three more ways to have fun challenging yourself on the mountain. Moguls being having to avoid the bumps and maneuvering around them trees having to avoid the trees and going through powder and powder without trees just just trying to keep the nose of your board out of the deep powder that picture you just saw flash in front of you when I said the word groomer was this a groomer Groomers are extremely powerful. As you can see, they run on tracks instead of wheels. That's to help get traction in snow and gain stability. And they have a really low center gravity to stay, to prevent tipping over when going up really steep runs. Groomers are also extremely powerful. They can level a normal mogul run without a struggle. This groomer has a special attachment which helps it groom half pipes in order to make the half pipe walls nice and smooth for the riders.